love me. Hey everybody! Well, um, we're back. Let that be a lesson to you. The best laid plans of mice and men. Some things I always forget the quote. If you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Regular Eden, right? That's regular Eden. Look, let's just say to the lamb. It's been a long week. <laughs> and we got a five streak. Holy cow. Our Eden starts have been amazing so far. I know you're surprised I remember them. I'm a little surprised too. Oh, it's the R key. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, we'll, the Arky Book of Virtues. Holy cow. We'll use it. I, I We probably won't take it to the end of the run and then pop it and then use it. I just got to be honest. Like, I wish I had that kind of time right now. It's just not a realistic scenario. But I'm still happy to have it. We can still get some efficacy from it for sure. Help me. Let's worry about just surviving first. And then we'll, we'll tackle all that other interesting stuff. So, you know, I mean, this is not, like, life is fine, but uh, the reason there's been a limited amount of Isaac and also everything uh, lately is uh, baby has not been in daycare, daycare provider until Christmas holidays, uh, very understandable, and then the whole family's been sick, so a lot of my uh, time has been, you know, shifted around domestically, making sure everything's okay, you know, all the domestic chores get taken care of and so on and so forth. Um, and then I got sick for a bit, and then, like, so this was, like, two and a half weeks or something like that, um, and then the baby was supposed to go back to daycare on Tuesday, but she was just feeling a little bit under the weather. She was, like, 50-50 to go or not go, so we figured, you know what, let's be good parents, let's, let's act in the way that we would want other parents to act. Uh, let's not send her to daycare, just in case it's a harbinger of something worse. Then, what we didn't realize is that, uh, apparently, according to the new protocol, if you don't, uh, if, if you take a baby out from daycare for one day due to symptoms of some kind of illness, it's an automatic 48 hour, they can't come back. So even though she was on the tail end of something, that meant that, you know, she didn't go back on Tuesday then, she didn't go back on Wednesday. Today is Thursday, woke up feeling great, Took her to daycare in the, a snowstorm. <laughs> not a, okay, let's not be dramatic, but the roads were like pretty bad, especially, you know, for Vancouver standards. Got her there, she's safe. Uh, had, you know, a, a, got three and a half hours into my stream or something like that, and then got a message from the daycare provider that was just a picture of a thermometer that was like, uh, she just came down with a fever, can you come pick her up? So we're still, you know, it's what I get for saying, like, I don't foresee any any problems on the horizon. You know, it's what I get for saying, uh, you know, I don't see uh, any any possibility that this could uh, possibly continue. So instead, what I'll say is, you know how, like, when an athlete uh, is out, but they don't want to disclose what the injury is, they just describe them as day-to-day. -day. Sometimes day-to-day -day means they're coming back tomorrow, and sometimes day to day you like they've been day to day for like six months and you're like what the heck excuse me how i guess because of lodestone i'm bad um you're like what the heck's going on with that well i don't know uh, maybe they're in the same situation maybe they got a baby that's in and out of daycare uh with runny noses and stuff like that the baby is fine by the way obviously the number one priority is the baby as soon as she got home we watched some elmo we watched some abby Gave her some water, gave her some medicine. She she's loving life. She's she's puttering around. She's at worse, let's put it that way. But obviously, I'm not like casting uh aspersions on the daycare situation or anything here. Obviously, people are justifiably on edge, I would say, with with uh, you know the new COVID variant and stuff like that. It makes sense to me. Anyway, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to have carved out a few minutes <laughs> to be able to... Oh, I forgot. Wait a minute, because we have Book of Virtues. We got nonstop deals with the angel. That's awesome. Um, that was not really, like, meant to be, like, me just complaining. Because, honestly, I, I think, like, the first couple of weeks of the cycle, <laughs> I was like... You kind of... I don't want that. It's garbage. Get it out of here. You know, when, when you have... Human beings are so adaptable, right? First off, this is not that bad in an absolute sense. Obviously, like, you know, everyone's healthy with the exception of, like, mild disease, you know, respiratory illnesses. Um, can we... We can pick that up. Okay. 
Um, so, you know, you got to keep your priorities in line. But also, humans are so adaptable, you know? Like, the situation kind of sucks. Let's drop this out here. Like, two weeks ago, I was like, man, this Omega sucks. Now, I'm like, you know what? I've already done it for, like, two weeks. What's another... I mean, I, I could coast on this kind of energy till the end of cold and flu season in April, for sure. I'm not taunting the, the powers that be. I'm not saying what else you got. I'm just saying I, I feel reasonably well-equipped to, to handle the challenges that life is throwing at me. But it has also cut into the Isaac and Super Auto Pets YouTube recording time. But I want you to know it's, it's not for a lack of desire. I just got to be honest. Like, I know at some point we're going to... We're going to want to use the credit card. We can't use it on a deal with the devil because we got... Or does Book of uh, Virtues only give you a deal with the angel your first deal? I think it might. So there's a chance we could use it on a deal with the devil at some point. But even beyond that, that shop's just not good enough. We get four and a half volt when we don't even have a, an item that that brings any merit to, to having it. Like with our key obviously doesn't help us out here. I'm drowsy, by the way. But yeah, it's just more just like, you know, I appreciate... I mean, literally nobody's been like, where's Isaac? Everybody's been like, it's very understandable, like, take care of your family first. And I'm like, I am. But I'm like, it's the the desire is there. Like, the, the same way that, like, people treat exercise as, like, mental health. It's probably not the healthiest way to wrap up your lifestyle. Or maybe it is the healthiest way to wrap up your lifestyle, except when, you know, unexpected stuff like this happens. But, um, you know, for me to be at peak mental health, having 40 minutes a day to ramble myself while this little baby shoots things in the basement, it, it, it grounds me in a way. And it, it helps me get out, you know, the stuff that keeps me from yelling at people on the street for like, oh, sorry, I tried to take up uh, my requisite... 20% of the sidewalk when, you know, you and your boyfriend and both of your dogs would like to walk side by side at literally all times and make no room for anybody around you to, to ever get uh, going. You know what really, oh, you piece. You know what really grinds my gears, man? I hate, and, and it, I don't know if it's a, if it's a city thing, if it's a Canada thing, if it's a Vancouver thing, if it's a modern thing, if it's, or if it's universal. But if you go to a grocery store that is basket focused, usually, you know, some carts, but most people use baskets. It's a lot of grocery stores, you know, in, in major metropolitan areas. They don't have a lot of space, right? And then people buy, like, because they're expensive, people buy little things. And then they make, like, a big Costco trip once every two weeks or something like that. That's that's the my understanding, at least. Let's just, let's move on. Like, this is going to be a long run if we want it to be regardless. Uh... But the baskets have two handles on them, and usually there's a place at the checkout where you can place your basket, you know, so it, it's a, it's like a Factorio conveyor belt, you know, you pick up your basket at the start, you leave it there um, during the checkout process, and then when the area becomes full, someone comes and moves the baskets to the front, and it's like, you know, it, it's a beautiful system. I don't know if anybody else gets irritated by the same stuff I do. But I am, uh, th the same way people, and I imagine it's got to be a lot of the same folks. You ever hear of the cart dilemma, where a lot of people um, do not take their grocery cart after they've loaded their groceries into their car? They don't take it back to the cart return area? Now, some people are listening to this and they're saying, why would you? You know, you don't get an incentive for it unless you're still on one of those systems where you got to put like a quarter in the cart and then it spits it out, you know, when you return it. Um... Or they're saying, you know, well, I had to pick mine up from a non-card return area because that was where I had to get mine, so I'm not going to do anybody any charity work. And then there's other people that... Credit card. I'm glad we saved it, man. There's other people like myself and hopefully many of the people watching this that like to live in, you know, at least the idea of like a functioning society where we do the bare minimum to make everybody's life as easy as possible, not merely our own. Uh, who take the cart back because we recognize that that extra 30 seconds that we take out of our day, um, you know, hel helps keep the, the wheels of society lubricated so that everybody can have a nice trip at the grocery store. So I'm, I'm, I always return my cart 100%. The, it's the right thing to do, and the feeling of guilt from not doing it, like, I, I would not return my cart if, like, I went grocery shopping and 
you know, my wife's water broke in the grocery store. I'd be like, I'm out of here, okay? But apart from that, like, that's about it. I, ooh, I, we don't need that. Just stick with what we got here. Get me out. I want to make the most of red stew. Um, in the same vein, a lot of people, like, over 50%, I feel, be putting their baskets in the basket return, but not folding down the handle so that the next basket can seamlessly be placed over top of it. Instead, they just drop it in. I understand that they were using the handles in advance. That's how they were holding on to it. But then you got to fold those handles down so that the next person is capable of putting their, th their basket in without having to touch your handles. Now, I'm not even trying to use a disingenuous, like, infectious disease angle here, but I think that there's an element of that for sure, especially in the modern day. But also, it's just the right thing to do. Even if you had to push somebody else's handles down in order to put your basket in the basket, your job is then to put your handles down and stop the cycle. I like Twisted Pear. You know what? Why not? Why not? Let, let's go hard on this one, man. Just, and it doesn't actually grind my gears to the extent that I, like, lose faith in humanity. Like, I'm sure people that don't put the handles down in the basket, they think of themselves as good people. They do positive stuff. They, you know, have an idea that one day in the future when they get more time, they're going to volunteer and they, you know, harass people on Twitter to give to charity but don't actually give themselves. I'm sure in their own mind, they're, they're great people. But I'm just saying this one little deed you can do that can make society just a little bit better, just function a little bit smoother. Maybe, I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe there was a little ignorance. Maybe they didn't know the basket etiquette. Maybe they were preoccupied, it happens, and they didn't think about it. But you know what, this is your one warning. I'm at these grocery stores quite often. If I see you there, if you recognize me, you say what most people say to me, hey, are you a uh, Northern Lion? And I say yes, and they say, I used to love your videos, and I say thank you for that. <laughs> it's still a compliment. Um, if I see you, don't put that basket handle down. I'm putting you on blast in the next Isaac episode, which would come out four to seven days from the event, depending on, you know, infectious disease uh, are not values in, in my province right now. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying that's a threat. I'm just saying you, I'm the observer. The observer of behavior is logged on. And I do be going to the grocery stores on occasion. I want to pour one out, too. That, that's a way of sharing sympathy. I People think I'm not a friend of the grocery clerk because one time I made a tweet that was... Oh, open quotation mark. Do you want a receipt? Close quotation mark. Gotta be about the dumbest question I ever heard in my life. I'll admit, you, you reap what you sow. The tweet was designed to provoke outrage, or at least confusion. What I didn't realize was I was uh, being painted, much like when, when Malf was like, you know, my landlord's not doing their job. And people were like, because he didn't say the word landlord in the tweet, people were like, hey, man, everyone's trying in the pandemic. It's a really bad look, Mr. Twitch streamer in your ivory tower to be talking smack about a, a fast food service worker and then he was like oh it's my landlord and they were like okay we'll carry on then um i was i was painted as an anti uh labor supporter you know i was i, I was in the pocket of like big costco or something no i don't think the worker should have to ask me if i want a receipt i don't need a receipt for my groceries man i live here what am i gonna do claim this uh, these tortilla chips on my taxes am i gonna go through the receipt later when i get home and you know pop it into QuickBooks or something like that. I'm sure there's some people that do it. Those people should have to make a special request, like the kinds of people who are like, give me the bacon cheeseburger, can you hold, can you make it with no cheese? You know, you gotta make yourself be known in that situation, not the normal people. Okay, hold on. I don't really care for Dreamcatcher, quite frankly. This is an insane run. I'm, I'm having a wonderful time. I'm bad at games, though. Um... What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I But I, I want to take the side of the grocery store clerk as well. So they've been rolling out self-checkout for what feels like a decade now. It probably like, literally has been a, a decade, I think, at this point. Um, we got to work on this system because, you know, I, I keep going to these grocery stores. And one of the self-checkouts is, like, it's constantly just flashing red, right? Like... I watch people, like this is why I, I would love to be in the self-checkout situation. We're going to stick with our key for now, even though we're going to use it on the next floor. I would love to use the self-checkouts for a couple of reasons. 
I don't think that I'm faster at doing the self checkout than a cashier. You know, that's they're they've got so much more practice and and expertise. They might know the product codes off by heart. I do not. You know, they they're better at it. But I also feel like it's like putting your own oxygen mask on, right? Like if I don't need the help, I'm not going to be a burden on the system. I'll check myself out. And then the kinds of people who are like, I don't understand how this machine works. They can go through the normal line. And again, society will, you know, function to, to each according to their needs from each according to their abilities, right? However, I, I, the reason I don't use the self checkout at the grocery store anymore is because you could like scan one thing, you put it on the scale, and then the scale is like, what the heck, man? This doesn't, this doesn't look like Western Family Skier vanilla flavor. We're gonna have to get some. We're gonna have to call someone from the big city to come down and take a look at this. And then one of the cashiers that's working, like checking people out. I'd like Diplopia, but again, it's a non-starter here, unfortunately. Um, I, I guess we could have two R keys, maybe. I don't. Probably not. But one of the cashiers who is checking people out has to come over and they don't even look at the what's going on. I can't even afford it, man. Uh, they just punch in their code without paying any attention at all. And then you're like back on your merry way, right? Now, again, I'm not being anti-cashier. Uh, it's quite the opposite. I'm just going to try it here, okay? I, I legitimately thought maybe if I moved into it at the right speed... I could I could get a second one and maybe make it work, but I'm still very happy with where we stand here. Our key is a very fun item. We're gonna we're gonna be stacked here, man. Anyway, um, the cashier shouldn't have to do that. The the it's one of those things. It's a task that shouldn't exist, right? I understand that in principle, you talk to the you know the short sleeve button up shirts at management they're probably like well what's to stop somebody from you know punching in uh you know cheese puffs but actually putting saffron on there well very little here's another question for you what's to stop somebody from just taking that saffron putting it in their jacket pocket and walking out the door like that seems like way more of a a reasonable threat than somebody like you know oh oops sorry officer i accidentally punched in saffron as like non-organic bananas so there's that but then also like the actual compliance to the task accomplishes nothing you could still absolutely just steal that way because when the alarm goes off the cashier has seen it 500 times they just walk over and go beep boop 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 and then they're like you're good to go you know they don't have time for that they, if they if they manually checked all the all the receipts you know the the gears of industry would screech to a halt we gotta introduce like just trusting self-checkouts may a lot of people will think that makes me naive but like so much more in life is already trusting every time you go to the grocery store they're trusting i don't walk out of there with things shoved in my pockets now admittedly there's probably a little bit of you know built-in privilege there as well but you know i'm not trying to dissect that issue i'm just saying simply when i'm at the grocery store the only thing that ever checks to make sure I'm not stealing is the self-checkout. The vulnerable parts of the grocery store are when you're in the aisles that are not uh, policed. <laughs> you could easily just walk down the cheese aisle, shove a block of cheddar cheese down your, you know, your jean waistband and, and be out. No self-checkout's gonna stop you. It's just one, it, you know, it reminds me of, it's the security theater, man. And I always, I, I've been ragging on this it's not a political statement in the slightest. It's just like a theme that I notice of like the people that follow the rules being punished for people who don't follow the rules. You know, like because people could commit a crime in this way, someone who 98% of the population would never intentionally like grift the grocery store like that. I, I believe that, you know, look, I'm not going to discount you as a human being wholesale if you maybe now and then you put in your organic tomatoes as non-organic hothouse tomatoes or, or something like that like you know times are tough i understand and also who's to say who's to say whether it's organic or not you know isn't that up to god to decide i don't know <laughs> legitimately <laughs> um i'm gonna guess no i'm gonna guess it's up to the supplier to decide arbitrarily but Either way, 
you know, 98% of the population is being proactively punished for what 2% of the population is getting away with anyway through an ulterior means, you know? Why should the law-abiding citizen have to be punished with the supposition of committing shoplifting when in reality they're probably just trying, they thought the self-checkout would be faster and then they get punished because, you know, the scale tolerance is set to like go off if something is more than 0.5% off its expected weight even though they didn't tear the scale properly. Like it's, it's, it's madness, man. It's just a weird place to put... I, I go on this rant like once a month, so I apologize. It's just such a weird place to put like a point of failure in a grocery store, you know? I, I, I just don't get it. Now, I'll, I'll say there are some self-checkouts that I think live in reality. There are some self-checkouts that like... I, I feel like maybe there it's a managerial difference. Like, I felt like they were all tuned badly for a few years. But then some companies were like, well, the choice is you can either, like, drain, you know, some of your labor to go hit the button every 30 seconds for literally no reason. Or alternatively, I really just want a key, man. Alternatively, we could just, you know, raise the tolerance on the scale or, like, unless... Something seems grossly off, you know, you don't have to worry about it, you know, etc. Or, or at least add in like a remote button where you could just activate it from the cashier register if they're already not going to look at what you're doing. At least let them do it from where they're already doing their stuff, right? I feel like some businesses lived in reality and they're like, you know what, we don't have security guards in every lane to begin with. We don't have security guards in every lane. We have security cameras. We don't have anybody watching them at, at all times. So sure, you know, let's just, let's make sure the wheels of industry are still turning right. But some grocery stores are like, I don't want anybody stealing my gorgonzola. And that's how you end up in this situation where, you know, the self-checkout actually is less convenient than the system we used to have. Probably based on somebody that hasn't stepped foot in a grocery store in like the last 20 years. But anyway, I digress. It's just one of the... I don't know, I'm, I'm going off, it's almost like I'm, I'm going off on like a nihilist bit here, which was not my intention. But it's like technology, in its purest form, has such a, an incredible ability to make life easier, and it does. W without a doubt, like, it, life, modern life is more convenient than it was when I was a kid. It also comes with different, you know, stresses, but it, it's definitely more convenient. You know, when I was a kid, there were only two foods you could get delivered. That's insane in the modern day. You could get pizza, you can get Chinese food. You could also occasionally get like some sick Iranian food if the pizza place also served a different kind of cuisine that they probably want to cook, but because of market dynamics, they're forced to be a pizzeria. That's how, as, as a youngster, I tried a lot of foods that, that opened my mind a little bit once I, you know, stopped being an insane picky eater. Every once in a while, though, I, I felt like I was kind of betraying them when I'd walk in and be like, I'll take the pepperoni pizza. So sometimes you're just in a mood for it, you know? I, I'm not going to besmirch the goodness of a pepperoni pizza either, but, you know, I, I digress. You could get pizza, you can get Chinese food. Now you can get anything delivered. That's more convenient. It's also substantially more expensive, but like, you know, is it more convenient? Yes. Everything's got problems, you know? There's always a there's always a dilemma associated with things. But then there's always like these little like compliance roadblocks that are like thrown up that that makes it worse. Like I always think about like when uh you try to use a business and the business even if you're at their physical lo location they force you to download the app in order to like interface with it what is this oh we already we already saw that it doesn't create a new one i think flooded caves too i guess you know i've got to remember that there's two sides of the convenience coin it might seem like self-checkouts in their purest form are more convenient for the consumer. I think that's probably true. However, self-checkouts in their compromised form are probably substantially more convenient for the business owner as uh, they get to hire less staff 
And if the customer experience gets slowed down slightly, well, you know what? That's probably just, you know, pennies on the dollar, right? Dude, what the heck is going on here? This, I mean, I guess the R key is what's going on here, but we're, we're having a stellar run. It's unbelievable. One thing that, it, and you know, again, it's always like it, it's more convenient until it isn't, right? I'll be the, what have I done? Wheel of Fortune is random dice room, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't even look. I was just like, send it. Oh, man. Well, you know what? This run is now not that good. But if I'm being honest with you, the thing that I'm most offended to have lost was my... Uh, bring him the photo, by the way. Is my Emperor card. I was looking forward to using that Emperor card, man. What the heck is this? Oh, we got money, bl blood money? Depths one. Man, I'm out of here. What the heck is going on? The coolest dream reality. But like, there was a period, and this is sincere and, and not negative. There was a period where we lived in an entertainment golden age. Uh, where, and I, I hate to talk about it because it was in living memory, you know, and, and it's lost from us. When Netflix, you know, beat Blockbuster, became uh, a, a Breaking Bad distribution box. But then after that, okay, Mars, it felt like uh, everybody was like, look at how successful like this show that's on FX has been. We got to get our show on the Netflix because it'll uh, really like up our user base and awareness and you know the show could become like a cult success long after its original release 2012 to about uh you know 2016 2017 it felt like uh netflix was was in peak form right every show you wanted it's probably on netflix where you live um then studios and television networks started to get a little bit like wait a minute why are we letting netflix get you know all this uh, market share when instead we could have our own HBO app and CBS All Access and uh, Paramount Plus and, you know, Peacock and Hulu and it never, Disney Plus, it never ends, right? Um, we legitimately, for a while, lived in an entertainment golden age where it really felt like for 10 bucks a month you could watch whatever you wanted at your own leisure. And you gotta recognize that if you were born around the time that I was, that seems kind of crazy. Because we used to, like, watch an episode... I'm not buying that. Are you insane? I'm never gonna activate that. Now that I think about it, it might have been a great pickup, actually. Um, but if you, like, wanted to watch an episode of The Simpsons when you were, you know, in 1996, you had a couple of options. Uh, one was see it when it aired. Another one would be tune in every day and hope that the episode you want to watch is on. That was probably the gold standard for seeing an episode of The Simpsons. Uh, the other one would be, because they didn't make VHS box sets, I think, at least not for not that many. You could buy DVD box sets. That was not smart there. Um, but every season of television that you wanted would probably cost you like 60 to $100. I know Blu-rays still exist, but Blu-rays compete on like a... It's a different uh, axis, right? Like Blu-rays are more about quality. I've, I've re-rolled all the items on the ground. I've lost my Emperor card again. <laughs> you know, it's more about quality or, you know, owning your own media or something like that instead of just literally access. So Netflix for a while, it was like a revelation, man. And nowadays, I mean, I guess the technology has not necessarily made life more inconvenient. It's more like, I guess, money has made life more inconvenient in that sense because other studios wanted their slice. And, and if I'm being honest, why shouldn't they? You know, Netflix didn't make The Office. They're just like a server somewhere. <laughs> what the heck is... Oh, I'm, I'm shooting goo, man. I was, I was trying to shoot my friend there. I'm not trying to take, you know, NBC's side in the streaming wars, necessarily. I, I liked it a lot more when it was all available on Netflix. At the same time, they didn't hire Steve Carell. There's a bunch of software engineers. 
What do you got, an app? Your whole company is just an app? I guess they make original programming now, but like, I mean like good stuff, you know? <laughs> for, the, for, for all intents and purposes, Netflix is essentially an, an app and a bank account, you know? Like legally speaking. All right, like, I don't, I'm not trying to insult Netflix. It's kind of. Mostly I'm not trying to insult Netflix. What is this? I'm drowsy. So true. So true, man. Who isn't these days? Okay, so I'm just getting out of here. How are we able to see the whole map here? Some kind of trickery. 1.66 rate of fire, 5.93 damage. That's pretty bad. Um, but I feel like we've got enough, like, miscellanea to help get us through here. Like, I, I don't think this run is incredible. We certainly gave up a much better run when we used the Wheel of Fortune card. I was gonna say accidentally, but that would, that's something of a misrepresentation. <laughs> I used it very much on purpose. I just didn't think about the consequences in advance. You think that my goo is homing because of... Like, Star of Bethlehem or something? What is even... Where's this goo even coming from? I have, like, Play-Doh tears, but, like... I don't know, man. Okay, so we're going Dark Room. Give me that. Lemmington? I'll take a Lemmington. I'll just, I'll use a Hanged Man. I'll get a little hushy. I'm just an island boy. I'm gonna just wear my vest if that doesn't bother you. Okay, don't forget. Even if you got confused about the map, you can always follow Star of Bethlehem. So anyway, I'm not trying to put the system on trial. I'm just saying, man. I'm just I'm just asking questions. I, you know what? I am trying to put the whole system on trial. And then the audience of Isaac gets to choose whether they find them innocent or guilty. I don't need, like, Law & Order SVU. I need, like, Law & Order... Well, well, I need SVU, but instead of, like, Special Victims Unit, it's, like, SCU. It's, like, the Social Crimes Unit. That would be a show, man. Going around, like... Excuse me, sir. I, and I don't think this should be a fictional show. I think this should be live-action documentary. Excuse me, sir, I can't help but notice you didn't put your cart back into the cart return. Can I ask why? I'd love to see him squirm, man. Oh, man, what do you think they'd say? I think you'd get a, you'd get a little bit of, like, oh, sorry, I forgot. You'd get a little bit of, yeah, my bad, I'm in a rush, but I should have done it. Like, yeah, I think you'd get some people that are, like, you know, they think of themselves as good people, but they're showing contrition. But then I think you'd find those people, I think there's more than I'd like to think that there are. That's a weird sentence, but that are just like, yeah, what about it? You know, life is a zero-sum game where if I can force somebody else to do something to, you know, uh, help me out uh, uh, that I didn't have to do, then that puts me slightly ahead of them on, you know, the rat race or something like that. You know, I bet you'd get a lot of people, too, that are like, you know, that's why they have cart... There's all... Because you always get that, right? There's always hear it when I talk about how you're supposed to bring your movie theater garbage out. And they're like, well, I leave my garbage in the theater because then they have another reason to have a job. And I'm like, I think that just sounds, that's just like laziness combined with delusions of grandeur. If they could get a robot to clean that garbage effectively, I mean, they would save on their labor costs immediately without a second thought. They wouldn't shed a tear. Unfortunately for them, we're still in an age where, you know, if a Roomba drives over cat fecal matter it's spraying it all over your house so th there's no way it's cleaning up chewing gum and soda and stuff like popcorn and stuff like that but rest assured your your actions are not as noble as you seem to think that they are but i bet you get a lot of that like that's why they have cart return people well yeah you know and arsonists are part of the reason we have firefighters that doesn't mean you should be just like you know screaming yolo in the lane swerving like t-pain you know we gotta got to take care of each other out here. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like I've hit a nerve. But, like, in a good way. Like, it resonates. At least with me. A little self-resonation. Self-resonance. Anyway. So, yeah. I'm in a good mood. <laughs> Genuinely, kind of. That dog story was almost real. Like, I didn't yell at uh, 
the people that were walking towards me, but there was a part of me, like, I, I felt the emotion rise up in me, and I was like, okay, I gotta take it, like, a step back. Just a nice couple walking their dog, but they weren't giving me what I felt was the requisite space on the sidewalk. They weren't giving me as much space as I was giving them, let's put it that way. It felt like they were trying to force me onto the curb a little bit, and I, I, I didn't even have to load it up. It was just already in the chamber. It was just like a torrent of, like, you know, I, I don't even want to say what I was going to say because I can't summon it on improv, honestly. It's the kind of thing that can only, you know, spew forth in a torrent of spittle like you're in a Dostoevsky novel or something like that. You know, I was going to go off, man. And then, like, feel bad about it. <laughs> and then be like, I've got to see a therapist. But, but man, for like half of a second, until I realized how regrettable it was, it was going to be sweet, man. I was going to put the whole system on trial. <laughs> so the moral of the story is put your baskets, like... You've already put the basket in the thing. You didn't just leave it on the floor. You're already 90% of the way there. Just fold the handles down so the next person doesn't have to touch your handles. If you had to touch somebody else's handles in order to put your handles... Uh, in order to put your basket in the box, then instead of doing the bare minimum and, and paying it forward and being a, a butthole... Because how do you know the person before you didn't have to, you know, do the same thing? You should break the chain and then just be smug. I know smugness gets a bad rap, man. Smugness is the is the reward that you get after you've done something that was like slightly above the call of duty that a lot of people don't do. It's better that I would rather have a lot of smug people than people that don't bring their carts back in the cart return area. Maybe that's because I'm a little smug though. It's been suggested. <laughs> yes, I'm not ignorant to it. I am cursed with many things, chief amongst them, perhaps, self-awareness. I know I sound like Fraser Crane, okay? I lean into it, I embrace it. It's part of my joie de vivre, Niles! Okay, we got not that much money. But luckily the items are terrible, so it's not really that big of a deal. I feel like we gotta go this way. Well, I gotta be honest with you, thanks for sticking around. This was like a... Not as good of a run as you would expect, given the tools at our disposal. Um, as a result, one Wheel of Fortune card. That's okay, you know? I'll, I'll live with it, I'll survive. Still had fun, still got a lot of, of powerful stuff. We, we, were, we were crushing it for a bit there before I, I hit Q unreservedly. But you know what? Still a good run. Anytime you get to use the R key, I'm a, I'm a happy camper. Am I in stain? Uh, in stain? You said in stain, though? There it is. I was waiting for the, the Bethlehem. Just to inform me I was on the right path. I was hoping maybe we'd get an item in here. I'll t that's an item in many ways. Yo, why do we... I, I say we. What I mean by we is uh, gossip colonists on, on Access Hollywood. Why do they call... A Hollywood couple, an item, you know? Like, what's the etymology behind that? It's technically not etymology, I guess, but... Because, like, I, I, I guess... Un, it's not that item is the word, it's that they're a singular thing, so they're an item. But we wouldn't call them, oh, are they an object? I guess an item doesn't have to be an object, it's like a symbolic construct. It, look, it just... Why don't we just call them a couple? An item? I don't get it, man. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Not an item. I couldn't pick them up off the shelf at Walmart, you know? I wouldn't find them in a treasure room in the Binding of Isaac. Maybe they're a single line in the phone book? Did those used to be called items or something? Like, I don't know. It's just all messed up, man. We gotta start society over from zero. Do you see how many glitches in the Matrix there are? Okay, anyway. We made it. And, and pretty well. Do not take me to delirium. My psyche cannot survive it. Thanks for watching. Again, we're making a good faith effort to get the episodes out on as regular of an interval as is possible. I appreciate your understanding and I already know what you're going to write. Family comes first. It's very true. Hopefully Isaac also exists, though. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya.